All right, so we're diving into Africa's children today. Oh, yeah, this one's fun. This is a good one. Yeah, it's intense. We're talking college campuses, African jungles, family secrets, wild science, you name it. It's not your average adventure story, though, is it? No, not at all. It really makes you think. Yeah, it makes you think about family and the choices we make and just what does it even mean to be human, you know? Absolutely. So, okay, we've got our three main characters, Deirdre, Phoebe, and Mitch half-siblings, all connected by this mystery surrounding their father who vanished in Africa. And they were raised, partly, by apes. Yeah, can you imagine? What a childhood, right. Yeah. And that connection to the primate world, it really comes into play later. It's like they have this built-in understanding of apes most people wouldn't even dream of. Exactly. Okay, so the book kicks off on a college campus. We meet Mitch, the youngest, and he jumps right into a fight defending a freshman from bullies. Oh yeah, that scene. Right off the bat. It's intense, and it gives you a glimpse into Mitch's past. Yeah, it's not just a random fight, is it? You get the sense that his past wasn't easy, especially considering he was kidnapped. Kidnapped? By this guy named Abe. Who kind of becomes a father figure to him in a weird way. Yeah. It's so complex. I mean, Abe kidnaps him, but then pushes him to get an education, have a stable life. Right. It makes you think about right and wrong, like what's the line? Totally. But then, bam, he finds out he has these two sisters, Deirdre and Phoebe. Right. You this family he never knew existed. Talk about an emotional roller coaster. Oh, totally. Yeah. You can feel how much Mitch wants that family connection he's always missed. And then there's Deirdre and Phoebe dealing with the fact they weren't there for him. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there emotionally. For sure. And then the story just throws this curveball. Oh, you're... Their dad, Arthur, he was part of this top secret experiment where his consciousness was merged with a chimpanzee. Like, <laughs> I know. A human chimp hybrid? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it sounds like something out of a sci fi movie, but it raises all these ethical questions. For sure. Like, where do we draw the line with science? What happens when we mess with consciousness like that? Exactly. And to cover it all up, they send Arthur, this human-chimp hybrid, to Africa. Ah, so that's where Africa comes in. And that's where Deirdre and Phoebe's expertise with primates becomes so important. They're determined to find their father, even if it means going into the heart of the jungle. And Mitch, understandably, is terrified. I mean, who wouldn't be? Right, Africa can be dangerous. But that pull of family, it's strong. Absolutely, and their fears, they quickly become reality. They get captured by these gorillas. Oh, no. Led by this seriously intimidating captain, Ade Amy. Oh, I remember him. Yeah, one minute they're researchers, the next they're tied to a tree in some remote village. Completely at these gorillas' mercy. And it's in this village that they encounter something totally unexpected. Fairy babies. Fairy babies? Yeah, babies born with certain deformities. The villagers believe they've been touched by fairies. Wow, that's a whole other layer to the story. Right. You've got these superstitious villagers and then the soldiers who think it's all ridiculous. It's like this clash between traditional beliefs and modern skepticism. Exactly. And then, amidst all this, Mitch does something completely unexpected. What's he do? He uses a rock, which the villagers see as a gift from the fairies, to kill a guard and free his sisters. Whoa. Talk about a turning point. Yeah, he just snaps like this sudden burst of courage, almost like the fairies empowered him or something. It's like he's finally stepping up, becoming the protector. But their escape, well, it doesn't go smoothly. Of course not. There wouldn't be much of a story if it did. Ha <laughs> ha, right. A firefight breaks out and they get separated. Deirdre gets recaptured. Phoebe vanishes into the jungle, and Mitch is left alone, lost and vulnerable. Oh man, just when they were reunited too. Each one facing a new challenge now. Yeah, it's like the story splits into these three separate journeys, each one full of danger and uncertainty. And we're left wondering what's going to happen to them. And Deirdre, now back with those gorillas. Oh, she's in for it. Yeah, it's a whole other level of horror. She's seeing the brutal reality of war firsthand, things no one should have to witness. Right, like that scene where she encounters the soldiers who have resorted to cannibalism. Yeah, that one was rough. It's so dark. It makes you wonder how she doesn't completely break down. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, surrounded by that kind of violence and depravity, and she still holds on to some hope. It makes you think, how would I even cope with that? And then there's Phoebe, all alone in the jungle. Talk about resourceful. Oh my gosh, she's using everything she knows about plants and animals to survive. Finding food, shelter, always watching out for danger. It's like she's tapping into this primal survival instinct. Totally. 
And it's not just physical survival, right? She's battling loneliness, fear, not knowing what's going to happen next. But she keeps going. Yeah, it's pretty inspiring. It is. While all this is happening, Mitch, remember he's lost in the jungle. Right, completely on his own. He stumbles upon someone unexpected, his supposed grandmother, Gracie Axel. I know, that was such a weird scene at first. But you can feel Mitch's relief, right? Finding someone, anyone who can help him. Oh yeah, it's a turning point for him after being on his own for so long, carrying all that weight of his past. Yeah, and as they travel together, Gracie, she starts opening up. Revealing some pretty dark secrets, huh? Oh, yeah. And regrets, too. It really adds to her character, you know? Absolutely. It humanizes her. Yeah, she's not just this tough, eccentric old lady. There's so much more to her. It's a reminder that everyone has a story, everyone's carrying something. Uh, back to Deirdre. She has this encounter with a chimp, Greybeard. And this isn't your average chimp, right? No, not at all. He's intelligent, almost wise, and he has this unique perspective on the conflict between humans and chimps. It's like the author is challenging us to see things from a different point of view. Totally. Greybeard makes these insightful observations about both species, their strengths and weaknesses, you know? It makes you think, what really separates us from animals? Yeah, it's deep. And then things escalate when the soldiers clash with a group of chimps. Oh man, that scene. I know, it's brutal, and both sides are surprisingly tactical, even ruthless. It's like this microcosm of the larger conflict, right? Humans versus nature. Exactly. And in the middle of all this chaos, we find out Arthur, their father, is dead. Oh no, after they came so close to finding him. I know, apparently he was killed in an earlier conflict. It adds a whole new layer of mystery, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. Mm. Why was Arthur living among the chimps? What was yeah. his role? And remember that experiment where his consciousness was merged with the chimp? Yeah, what about that? It seems like it was more complete than anyone realized. Like, there are hints. Arthur, in his chimp form, might have even tapped into some higher power. Whoa. That's blurring the lines between science and spirituality. It is. And adding to the mystery, there's this volcanic crater. Like a hidden world. Exactly. Full of strange plants and animals, untouched by the outside world. It's like this symbol of the unknown. Yeah, and it's there that Deirdre makes an incredible discovery. What's that? Ancient cave paintings that depict this lost civilization, more advanced than anyone imagined. Oh, wow. It's like a whole hidden history. Right. It makes you think, what happened to them? Were they destroyed? Did they evolve into something else? The possibilities are fascinating. And finally, after all that separation and hardship, the siblings are reunited. It's about time. I know, right? You can just feel the weight lifting off their shoulders. But it's not just relief, is it? It's like a moment of reckoning. Totally. They have to confront the truth about their family, their father's fate, all the choices they've made. And just when you think things are settling down, Gracie Axel drops a bombshell. Oh, tell me. She confesses to being responsible for Arthur's death. She hired mercenaries to kill him. What? That's insane. I know, but it kind of makes sense in a twisted way. She was desperate to protect her family, her legacy. Right, it shows how far fear can push someone. And to do things they never thought possible. And then, as if things couldn't get any wilder, we're introduced to this hidden race of people, the Aziza. The Aziza, who are they? They live in harmony with nature, possess this ancient wisdom. It's like a whole different way of life. It's like they represent a path not taken, you know? Like there are other ways to exist in this world. Yeah, it's like they found this balance that we've totally lost. Right, living in harmony with nature, like a blueprint for a different way of being. And the book doesn't sugarcoat things either. No, not at all. It shows the violence, the greed, the exploitation, like a warning about what happens when we let those impulses take over. Exactly. It forces us to confront that dark side of human nature, doesn't it? Yeah. That we all have that capacity within us. Yeah, it's heavy stuff, but so thought-provoking. It really stays with you. And then the ending, oh man. It's a real gut punch. Deirdre and Stan, who've grown close to the Aziza, they have this huge decision to make. Do they stay or do they go? Yeah, embrace this new way of life with the Aziza or return to the world they know. That pull of the familiar, even if it's messy. It's like this classic dilemma, isn't it? Torn between two worlds. Two different paths. On one hand, you have this simple life, living in harmony with nature. Part of something bigger than yourself. This utopian ideal. But then there's that pull of the familiar, the people and places you love, even with all their flaws. And the book, it doesn't give us an easy answer. No, it leaves us hanging. Making us ask ourselves, what would we choose? What would we sacrifice for a better life, a better world? 
It's like the author saying, okay, now it's your turn to figure this out. Right. And it's not just about us, our individual choices. They impact the world around us. Exactly. It's a call to action to look at our own lives, our values. Ask ourselves, are we living in a way that aligns with what we believe? Powerful stuff. Wow. This deep dive has taken us on quite a journey. From family secrets to the fate of humanity. I know, right? Africa's Children is a book that will definitely stay with me. Me too. And I hope with you too, our listeners, it's this reminder that the world is full of wonder and mystery. And possibilities. But ultimately, of the choices we make, they shape everything. Our lives, the future of our planet, it all comes down to those choices. Well said. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. The pleasure was all mine.